proudest moment in your career is? Uh, probably a moment that I, or an email that I just got. I mean, I've got, I've got several moments, I guess, but the one that, that stands out most recently is I got an email from a, res a former student who emailed me years later and said that something that I had taught her on shift and the way that I taught her uh, actually helped her save a life. So to me as an educator, that summed up my entire career to that point, that something I taught someone literally was transitioned to the actual care of a patient. Your favorite star is? Movie star? Favorite movie star? Probably Bradley Cooper. Yeah, I'm a big Bradley Cooper fan these days. Your favorite star in emergency medicine is? Wow, so many. I'm going to have to say Amma Matu. Good friend of mine, mentor, educator, brilliant. I mean, yeah, Amma Matu, hands down. What is your best advice to trainees starting their career? I would say work hard, get along with other people. Most of the things that lead, will lead to success for you aren't necessarily about reading emergency medicine or knowing the most. It's the soft side. It's the, the skill of working with people. It's being nice. It's knowing people's names. It's, it's treating consultants with respect. It's being emotionally intelligent. Most of us are intelligent, but it's being emotionally intelligent, not letting things get to you. Um, if you do those things, you'll have a long and happy life in emergency medicine. If you don't, you'll be quite miserable. What advice would you like to have been given when you were starting your career in emergency medicine? Well, emergency medicine is a hotbed of emotions, cases that come in, working with consultants who sometimes don't want to do what we want them to do. And so the advice that I gave on what a trainee should do is the advice I wish I had been given. I wish I had been given more advice on being emotionally intelligent and not letting things get to me so much. Because when people get all frazzled and, and uh, you know upset and agitated, it, it just it doesn't help anything. So I wish someone years ago would have told me, just learn, read the books by Daniel Goleman on emotional intelligence. I've learned this as an adult. I wish I had learned it sooner in life. Your biggest personal possession is? Biggest personal possession. My house, perhaps? Do you work out? I do. I've lost probably 50 pounds in the last two years. What is your usual workout routine? I usually go to the gym once a day for an hour and a half, um, five to six times per week. What is your secret vice? My secret vice? Wow, I have to be careful because I'm on camera. No, I'm just kidding. Um, secret? I don't know that I have a secret vice, but I'm, I'm on social media way too much. If you're on social media too much, you need to like reduce it a little bit. What is your spirit animal? Spirit animal? I'm going to have to go with the sloth. What is your top hobby? Uh, I've got several that I do regularly, so spending time with family, reading. Uh, I love outdoor stuff, biking, hiking, um, kayaking. Are you a dog or a cat person? Oh, definitely dog. Cats are horrible. <laughs> your favorite off-duty activity is? Uh, spending time with family. One trait to look for in a trainee is? Work ethic, definitely. Besides face-to-face, -face, what is your favorite way to communicate with trainees? So I'm a big fan of utilizing social media to connect with learners after a shift is over. And you know, if a millennial learner is on Snapchat or Instagram and that's how they like to learn, then that's where I'll take my educational efforts, meeting them where they like to learn. Describe your leadership style in five words or less. Well, I'm not sure I can do five words, but I'll try. I would have to say uh, building other people up, not yourself. One should emergency physicians consume less is? Wow, consume less. Uh, we probably drink way too much coffee. One should emergency physicians consume more is? Coffee. <laughs> what is the best way to say no? That's a great question. I wish I'd learned how to do that years ago. I think my advice would be to tell the person asking the question, let me think about it for a little bit. Best way to run a teaching session is? Involve your learners. The worst way is to just stand there and talk. The best way is to involve them. Best way to communicate with a patient is? Take a chair, 
pull it up beside their bed, and if they're scared, hold their hand. But definitely, the the longer you can spend sitting at their level, maybe even on their bed with them, is is the best way, I think. Mm-hmm.